Hiya folks, welcome to today's video and we're going to do a little shout out as well, a little bit later on, so I'll see you in a second. Right, here we are, Sunday afternoon, not done much work as you know. I've had the results from the x-ray on my shoulder and they said that there's excess fluid build up in the bursa sac, whatever that means, I don't know what that means. Obviously there's a fluid joint there which protects the joint and um, the ultrasound picked that with extra fluid in it. So I've got to go back to the doctors in 10 days and uh, they design a course of action for me, I suppose. So anyway, that was the trouble I've got with my shoulder. Battery drills, as you know, very handy things. This one is a Clark. 18 volt lithium iron battery one, which I've not had very long, although it's in a bit of a state cosmetically, but um, basically what happened is, is the charger's packed up. Now this is the charger for it, and basic two prong one. I got this from uh, Machine Mark, this uh, battery and charger outfit. So what I done was I, I went down Machine Mark and uh, took this with me, with me, and they said, oh, we can't do nothing about that. You have to contact our spares department uh, over the phone and they should be able to supply you with one. So anyway, I phoned up the spares department and they said that uh, they don't make this one or they haven't got any in stock. They've got to order it directly from China with this make. There's other ones they keep in stock, but this one apparently they don't, typical. And I said, no, don't worry about that. I'll find out elsewhere. So anyway, so anyway, I looked online and I went to the Clark website, not Machine Mart, I went to the Clark website, direct website, totally different website, dialed the number up and I asked the chap there and he said, have I just spoke to you? I said, well, <laughs> and I realised it was the same bloke I was talking to. He was from Machine Mart, the first bloke who I phoned up, their technical, the, their spares department. I, phoned, I visited the Clark website, nothing to do with Machine Mart, as I thought, and it got through to, the, that was a different phone number, I was speaking to the same person. So just to let you know that Clark is Machine Mart, or Machine Mart is Clark, they're parts and whatever. And I couldn't get this, I had to order this from uh, China, and I thought, well, I'm not going to wait for that. Probably wouldn't be long, but I think it was about 30 quid, something like that. So uh, what I decided to do was to open it up and have a look at it. So that's what we're going to do now. I've actually had a look inside, I'll show you what I found, because I've had to order the part for it. But uh, what I did notice is that it had a bit of a rattle, as you can probably hear there. And that's all I knew. So let's open it up and I'll show you what I found. Right, don't worry, this isn't a retro hacks video, although I've got my new banner at the back there, as you can probably see. But uh, yeah, I mean, all I thought, I thought, well, for the sake of it, I'm going to take it apart and have a look. So there's only four screws on the base here. That's the uh, charger I'm dealing with, if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a model number CON18LI for lithium iron uh, battery it's got in there. So. Let's just undo these four mounting screws at the bottom. Right, now we should hopefully be able to just separate this. As you can see, something's just dropped out there. And what I found when I opened it up was this little thing. I didn't know what it was, to be honest with you. It's just like a little component, but I didn't know what it was. But all I'd done was I basically just have a look around. And the first thing I'm looking for, whenever I look at any circuit board or anything, is any sign of burning or any issues at all. I couldn't see anything in there apart from being a little bit dusty. But one thing I did notice down here was right on the input feed, I'll just bend that wire back there, I don't want to bend it too much. Down there, I could see a little, what I think was a little uh, fuse. Basically what I had there, that little tiny piece what I had there, seems to have come from there. It's actually got written on there, two volt, uh, two amps, 250 volts. So to my mind, that was a fuse. And uh, what I'd done was to lift it out. That comes out of there as well, get that out of the way. And I could actually see on the back of it, so I knew that that was a little fuse in there. Now, I didn't know whether I could get them or not, but I managed to find these ones which had the same sort of wire configuration. It's a two amp again. And uh, if I just take this out, I'll show you. As you can see, they've actually got these little wires soldered onto the end of them. And that's basically the same sort of fuse, although this one's physically a little bit bigger. 
it should do the same job. If I can unsolder that, which I'm going to do in a minute, and solder this one back in, if it then blows again, then obviously there is some sort of problem with the circuit board. I can't physically see anything. Although, looking here, I, I don't know whether it is the case or not, but uh, you've got D1, D2, D3 and D4. I'm not too sure whether D1 looks like it's a little bit black there. I'm not sure. It could be, it couldn't be. If I turn it over, there's obviously some possi something possibly to do with the transformer that. So that may be the case. I'm not too sure yet. I'm going to change that fuse anyway. And all that does is involve me turning the circuit board over, heating up the solder there, and in the other spot down there, and obviously withdrawing these and then hopefully threading this one back in. And we'll, we'll do that now, and uh, I'll see you in a second. Unsolder this little component here first of all. Right, there we go, there's one bit out. And the next bit could be a bit more trickier. So grab hold of it first, straighten it out. I could do with my smaller stuff here. I used to do all this sort of stuff. I actually got a City and Guilds in electronics, but uh, that was a long while ago. <laughs> and I should have my glasses on, really, but I haven't. And there's the second bit out. Right, okay. So that's the fuse out. Now, what I would normally do here, and uh, I'm going to try anyway, I've got this thing called a solder sucker. And what I'd normally do is to clean up the solder there by just heating it up. Till it melts and then suck it up and that leaves your hole nice and clean you see I'll show you in a second and then, see I've got a blob of solder over the hole there makes it hard for me to put it back in again so you just basically heat it up and suck it and as you can probably see there let me put that soldering iron down for a minute both of them holes now as you can see are totally clean and I can thread the new component through from the other side which is our fuse there it should go through like thus and as you can see there I'll just bend it off centre a little bit just spread it so it can't fall out and as you can see there I've got the component through now and you can get flux solder I haven't got no flux solder but I've got this uh, normal solder here which uh, flux sorry which I just put a little dab on there a lot of the times you don't need to do this, but um, in this case I'm going to do it. Now as I say, because I've bent the wire slightly outwards as you can see, there's no chance of them uh, pulling out. I've only got a little bit of solder here, this is all the small solder I've got. So I've got bigger solder, but it might be in the way. So what I'm going to do is to just, I'm going to try and put a blob of solder on the end of my soldering iron. And just literally... Tab onto there like that, and whether you can see or not, that's both of them now soldered on there perfectly. Now I could do as I say with my short uh, side cuts, but I'm just going to chop off the extra bit of cable on there. That is real soldered back on there with our little fuse in there sitting in there, and all I'm hoping now is that. Uh, that little component, which I thought was a little bit black there, I might be wrong, but uh, I'm anticipating if it does blow again, then I don't know what these components are. But if that was the case, um, that would need changing as well. And sometimes you can get issues with uh, dust on circuit boards and stuff, and then the wires or, or power can track between. So I'm just going to give that little brush out as well, in case there was any tracking across. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with electronics, but a simple check, sometimes you get in certain um, power supplies or even old-fashioned record players and stuff like that. These are the capacitors, these big black cylinder, cylinder things here. And one, one of the visual checks I do when I'm stripping down electronics like this, not that I'm telling you to do this, is that you nine times out of ten, it could be capacitors blown. You get this a lot in big t, uh, uh, TV sets as well, the uh, flat screen TVs. And one sign that a capacitor has gone on your, on your power board, for example, is that this bit here, the top cap, starts to dome outwards, like upwards. As you can see, these are totally flat. But a sign that a capacitor has gone is that they start to dome upwards. If it, it can only dome up slightly, and that can cause a, a, a big issue. So just a visual check, one of the things I'm looking for when I strip this down was, was the capacitors all right. These are all right in this case, these three little black things there. And as I say, I'm just looking for burn marks normally when I'm checking out electronics. There is a possible mark there, as I said to you. 
I'm not too sure if it's a tracking mark or uh, we'll only find out when I plug it back in because I don't actually know what these components are they might be some sort of a diode or something or some sort of a yeah power diode there's D1 I see D would probably mean diode diode 1, diode 2, diode 3, diode 4 and as you've got AC coming in you've got AC and then you've got to convert it to DC because you're going to be charging the battery up you can only charge a battery up with DC so anyway that's that I've got that put back on now so let's put this back together we've got our fuse in as you know Again, there's not much to it, but I thought for the sake of it, I might as well take it apart and have a look. Right, okay, here we go. I haven't tested this, so you're seeing this live with me. None of these lights were coming on when I've done it, so uh, let's try it, plug it in. I'll listen for any popping sounds as well if I can when I turn it on. No popping sound at the moment, but no lights are coming on. I can't remember if they only come on when you put the battery on. Right, well that's not worked either, is it? <laughs> it was worth a try. There's definitely no light on there. I personally think that that fuse has blown something, but there again, I could check me circuit fuse and all, I didn't check that. Right, okay, let's just uh, get this open here. Now I've just put the meter across the, uh, the continuity meter or the buzzer rather and it's showing that we've got an open circuit between live and neutral so obviously something's blown and that could be the fuse but I've just got another 3 amp fuse here which is what goes in the plug top and as you can see we've got our audible biz and obviously shut sign that that fuse okay when I come to change it so I'm just gonna pull that out of there and just take this fuse out and check this fuse and if this fuse is okay, then we've obviously got a problem still internally. And I reckon it's something to do with that burn component which I saw. So let's just hold that on there. Oh, no, look, we've got an open circuit. So that fuse has blown. So get rid of that. Put that new fuse in. Put the cover on. Let's just see what we've got here now, if we've got anything. Yeah, it's showing some sort of resistance now. I don't know what the resistance is, but uh, we'll just switch it off. We're taking the battery off of there, so let's plug that back in again. Right, so we're back to square one, so we put that back in. Okay, I did notice the lights flicker then, I think. It might have been me, I might have been wrong. And now let's put the battery back in. No, that's gone again. I would think that that light flicker I just saw would be a fuse blowing. So let's take that out again. Let's take that fuse out. Or oh, let's just measure across here because we had a resistance, didn't we? Across here. So bring that back in. And just put that back across. And our open circuit again. No, no sign of anything, so the fuse is blown again. There is another issue in there, and it looks like it's something to do with that little burning mark which I saw around that little component in there, which means that basically it's going to be uneconomical to repair. I'll have to get back on the machine mark, and I'll have to tell them, all the one from China, although they don't take too long to come from China nowadays. Otherwise, I can't use the drill, and it's over a £100 drill. Not a bad drill. Lithium iron battery, I've got two of them, but it was worth a try. And always to say, from the visual check, it did look like that there was a burn mark on that component. So nine times out of ten on circuit boards, it's especially with things of this sort of cheapness, twenty-four pounds. It's not worth the hassle, and that's why people give up and buy new ones. A lot of people just throw this away and say, oh, "I'll get a new battery drill and all," because you can pick them up for about forty pounds. But this was quite a good one, if I remember rightly, around a hundred pound mark. So I'm not going to do that. I'll have to spend twenty-four pounds to get that. Anyway, that didn't work. Let's get on to our little shout out from our little. Uh, Little Millie, let me tell you about Millie. Right, so as you probably know, I know I've met quite a few uh, of my subscribers to the channel, people who watch the channel, both channels actually, Retro Hacks as well as um, the uh, Retro Restore, and also my t-shirt channel, which is now going to be brought to an end. I'm still going to leave all the t-shirt videos up there, but um, I'm not too sure exactly what way I'm going to go with it now, what, whether I'm going to take that channel in a different direction, just use it, because there's 30,000 subscribers on that channel, and... Um, 
although they probably might not all subscribe, it's not worth losing that because the channel's got an established. It's been up since 2005, I think, if I remember rightly. Uh, two things I want to talk about. First thing is little Millie. Uh, Tracy, my daughter, as you know, she's got uh, the hair lounge studio in uh, Woodall Spa. And uh, she had a, 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 a young lady, only six years old. She come in with her mum and her sister, uh, mum Carly and sister Neve, uh, to have her little Millie's haircut. And uh, I got a phone call yesterday from Tracy saying that Millie... Uh, is a big fan of Retro Restore with her dad as well, Roy. And uh, they watch the videos, and she watches them most days, apparently. Little Millie's six years old. i just like to say, this is one of the reasons why we don't like any swearing or any foul language on our show, because we have got quite a, a wide, broad, broad audience of people who watch our videos. So that's why in the comment section, when people start swearing and all that, I don't even bother replying, I just delete it all anyway. So yeah, Millie come in, and I got a phone call from Tracy saying, can we come down... Or can I come down and actually meet her? So anyway, lucky enough, I still have some me uh, Retro Restore stickers. I haven't got many left. I'll have to get a new load done. And I took a couple of them down. So we open the door, goes in there and see Millie having her haircut. I don't think she actually was quite aware that it was actually I was going to turn up because it, was, it wasn't planned or nothing. But I did turn up anyway. So we met Millie. This is Millie anyway. This is her uh, in, uh, having a little photograph with me. Her mum took a few photographs, Carly as well. And uh, Neve did. Although Neve, I think, does watch the channel. She was sitting in there as well. But uh, uh, Dad Roy, apparently, uh, watches with Millie. Likes the old uh, restoration. I think they also watch the Retro Hacks channel. So, hello again, Millie. Uh, and, obviously, Mum Carly, Neve, who was there. I didn't see you, Roy. Maybe one day. You live in uh, Fishtoft uh, in Boston or just outside Boston. Which isn't too far, actually. I think you travelled about 20 miles. Maybe a little bit more. To, to, to visit us or visit Tracy having her haircut yesterday for Millie. So those of you who also know about uh, my t-shirt printing business, we've now uh, sold all the equipment. And um, so if, if you was getting t-shirts done from me in the past, uh, if you visit or go over and have a look at um, Essex Mini YouTube channel, sorry. Essex Mini is Chris. Now Chris, as I say, he's done t-shirts before and he's a bit like me. I, I've had a look at a few of his videos. And he does very similar stuff to what I do, although he's not got many uh, subscribers. So if we can get over to Chris and uh, build up these stuff, he makes up these little like placards, not like this, like sort of that sort of f f size. I don't know exactly what size they are. And he can print anything you want onto them sort of thing. At the moment, he's done old-fashioned signs and things like that. I think he's done a load for Dave Jag as well. So uh, Dave Jag displays them on the front of his uh, work cabinet there. And they, they actually look really old and vintage. If you know, you can, you can basically put any design on them. So that's that. He also does tankards as well, and glass tankards with a glass square coaster, uh, which he etches when he can etch them with anything as well. And uh, yeah, I was having a look through his channel as well the, the other day, and um, I see that he does very similar stuff. He's got a similar sandblasting setup to what I have. And one thing I did find, Chris, is looking at your system, one of the biggest problems I had, if you've got one of them sandblasting cabinets that I've got, is the. Uh, the extraction system and I've had two two or three different vacuum cleaners plugged on to the side of the sandblasting cabinet and as you know Chris which I didn't realize that you could get these things uh, they're, they're forever blocking up because of the dust that breaks down and is taken into your filters of your your vacuum cleaners well Chris showed in one of these videos that he's got this sort of cyclone uh, triangle thing that sits on top of a plastic bucket and you basically put that in line between your uh, the outlet of your sandblasting cabinet and your vacuum cleaner and this thing the hose comes into the top of it it's, it spins around drops all the fine powder into the bucket and then sucks the air out to vents to your hoover or your vacuum cleaner as normal fantastic bit of kit if you go on ebay uh, i'll show you a picture one here now so of those of you with sandblasting cabinets have a look at this it's only a cheap piece of plastic basically and it basically does a really great job so thanks for your little enlightenment on that one Chris as well because I didn't know about that and one thing which I'll be also experimenting with and we did talk about this when Chris did pop up to pick the uh, t-shirt printing equipment up was the, uh, the the idea of powder coating now I was I've been thinking about doing this for ages and the reason why I haven't done it at the moment is that I've got pretty much limited space where I'm working at the moment although this looks nice and tidy as you can see but you don't want to see the rest of it <laughs> so I could make room in here but as you know I've got plans to build out the back of me other uh, this log cabin to go further back but that that will come later 
But I was just looking around here now, and I could actually have a shifty round and get that set up. So that's something coming up in the near future, possibly. Uh, I'm going to be making a powder coating cabinet, very similar to the one Chris has got. And so if you go over to his channel, which is Essex Mini, and give him a sub as well. As I say, if you want T-shirts done, go over to Chris and he'll, like email him direct sort of thing, and he'll be able to do your T-shirts that I used to make for you anyway. So that's Essex Mini Chris, and, and also... Carly, Roy, Neve, and also Millie. Good to see you the other day, Millie. And also your mum and your sister as well. Maybe one day Roy will bump into you as well. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm going to be doing a lot more on the Retro Hacks channel. As you know, I was thinking, let me bring this over here. Look. I'll put this over here. This is A lot of people have said, is this going to be for the trotter mower? A lot of people have been asking about the, the trotter mower. Yes, it is. And... Those of you who are members of the Retro Hacks channel, we now refurbish this uh, as my last video. And uh, I've done literally, got to be hundreds of these. I've stripped these down hundreds and hundreds of times, right? And it's only when I watch the video back, I realise that I put the gasket and diaphragm on the wrong way. Of course, when the video is up, it's too late now. So I've left a comment underneath that that, that is the case. So it's when you've got the tank, you lay the... the oh, I've got to think now again. You lay the diaphragm on the tank first and then you put the gasket on, and then you put the carburetor on. That's the way it should be. So it's diaphragm first, gasket second, and then plonk the carb on top and then bolt it down. That's the way it should be. And I've done under it, so even I'm still getting it wrong. Never mind. One of the other little projects which I'm going to possibly be doing, again, I'm not too sure whether or not I'm going to be putting it on the Retro Hacks Retro Restore channel or converting over me... In, uh, me, me t-shirt printing business is oh that's all I was telling about this first of all wasn't I? let me do this first so yeah what I'm going to do with this one give me your input right I haven't even started stripping it down yet it's Sunday this has got to be up for Wednesday next video on me retro hatch channel I'm toying with the idea of painting when I strip it all down painting the engine gold right now don't forget the, the, the mower deck is yellow that will be gold the cap will be black, the uh, the shroud on it sort of thing. And uh, I'm just toying with the idea. Now, I haven't got gold heatproof paint, because nine times out of ten, when I paint these, I just give them a quick blow over with um, normal engine paint, because they don't get really too hot, the actual engine. I'm not painting this, the uh, the cylinder in, I'm not sure. I might paint that with heatproof black, the cylinder head, because that gets the hottest. But as far as the actual engine case com uh, is concerned, Tell me the idea of doing it gold. Leave a leave a comment in the comment section below what you think of that one. So that's that. That's coming up hopefully Wednesday. I've got to start stripping this down tomorrow. And I've got a whole gasket set. As you can probably see there. That's for one of these classic 3.3 to 3.5 engines. You've got the top and bottom oil seals there, as you can see as well. Various other gaskets there. So that costs about £10, I think. So if you're going to be stripping one of these down... And splitting the casings as we're going to be looking at because we're going to look inside that engine we need one of them to rebuild it so that's that's that let's put that over there now this is something which i'm going to show you this is for me new content which i'm going to be putting on there let's show you what we've got inside right i've got loads of bits and pieces in here and let me tell you whether you can guess what i'll be probably doing let's pull some of this out look all this gear here look some smaller Torx bits, I think they are. Yeah. Here, look, dentist, dentist tools. There, look. Small plastic shot glasses. More fine tweezers and uh, plier things, whatever. What have we got here? Little spatulas. These are commonly used in the dental trade, to be honest with you. Although I'm not pulling teeth out. What else we got there? Little fine detail paint brushes, look. These are little... Oh, hold on. That's little pipettes they are. We've got some... Uh, what have we got here? Hold on. Oh, more fine paint brushes. Um, we've got some special uh, liquid chrome pen. Uh, there's an orange one there and there's a red one. Tiny little screws. Look at these, look, tiny little things. Different, different, uh, little small, tiny little rivets. What else we got here? Little 
little bits for the Dremel, look, little buffing pads. Oh, everything's miniature. More precision. Like, like they're like what the eyebrow tweezers, I suppose, something like that. Again, all, all small stuff. What have we got here? Look. Little uh, die grinder bits, I suppose. Miniature wire wheels, all for the Dremel again. Here we go. Some masking tape, again, look how small that is. <laughs> small stuff. Some super glues. We've got a whole punch, I've already got one of them anyway. And, oh, hello, model filler. What have we got here, look, model filler. What's this we've got from China? Oh, they're more buffing wheels. Yeah, little buffing wheels, you can't see this can, look. I've ordered them directly from China. Mr. Colour, clear gloss. Mr. Colour, levelling thinner. So, as you can see, a vast array of new stuff, which I'm not used to dealing with. There's still some more little bits and pieces to get sort of thing. And I'm going to be restoring, listen... These sort of things. <laughs> look at them, look. That's a little model bus there, which I've picked up again off of uh, eBay, only cheap. These are normally bigger than the ones I'm going to be restoring. I'm going to try these ones. I say I'm not really too bothered. But there's a lot of work in these, and there's quite a few channels on YouTube that restore little, like, matchbox toys and dinky cars and stuff like that. And I thought I'd give that a go. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because of my shoulder and my knees and stuff. So, you know, I'm going to be restoring smaller cars. <laughs> I tend to take so long doing big cars, as you probably know, although I'm still going to do repair work on Retro Restore and stuff like that. So I'm not too sure where to put these videos at the moment. Whether I put them on Retro Hacks, Retro Restore, or change the T-shirt channel and start uploading and call that channel something different, I'm not too sure yet. Give us your opinion below what you think I can put these videos. And is it the sort of thing that you're interested in as well? As I say, if it's not, if people are, uh, uh, I'm going to put a poll out actually. I'll put a poll out on Retro Restore and see if you're interested in going on this channel or whether you wouldn't mind me doing a, a dedicated channel just for this sort of stuff as well. So let me know on the poll. But I'll put a poll up there. Just let me know what channel you want me to put these restoration videos on. Anyway, that's it for now. There's a little update on Sunday. I've got loads of decorating to do indoors. I'll show you that probably in another vlog or whatever. So uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.